So in my previous video, I did get some criticism because some people felt like I was regurgitating basically what was on the Farmer's Dog website. So I'm gonna try and give a much more honest appraisal of their dog food in this video. And for me, I'm gonna start with some of the big advantages of the Farmer's Dog and one of the things that I found most important and one of the reasons why I really liked their fresh dog food service. So you do have to enter details about your dogs when you sign up. So you have to share their breed, their age, their weight, their activity level, and other factors just like that. Basically, most dog food subscription companies that I have tried and reviewed as part of my work with Life of Klikai and as part of my previous work with Hello Bark, you do tend to have to fill out these questionnaires. So that's nothing new. Where I felt like the Farmer's Dog differed from most of the brands that I have reviewed is that they actually really delivered on the customizable element for my dogs, Sky and Copper. Now I will point out that what I was most interested in was the weight goals because Sky needs to gain a little bit of weight because she's always been a little bit skinny and Copper's always been a little bit chubby so he needed to lose a bit of weight. So that's what I was particularly looking for when I was looking for the customization element. So when other fresh dog food companies have sent out their meal packets, usually they just have the recipe on the front. There was no name for Copper or Sky. So I didn't know were these for Copper or were these for Sky. It was hard to tell. And I just ended up feeding the same packet to Sky and Copper. What I liked about the farmer's dog is that each individual meal packet was labeled with their name. So I knew if a meal packet was for Sky and aimed towards helping her gain a little weight. And I also had Copper's meal packets, which were obviously aimed for him to lose a bit of weight. What I also liked about these meal pouches is that there was actually a feeding guideline on the front of each meal pouch. So it shows how much of the meal pouch you should be feeding each day. So that's a really handy portion guideline. Now, some other fresh dog food companies do do this portion guideline, but with my previous experiences with these other fresh dog food companies, they don't do it very well. The meal packets are really skinny and it's really hard to actually follow that portion guideline. Whereas the farmer's dog meal packets are much more chunkier and more substantial. So I actually felt like I could properly scoop out the correct portion for each of their meals. So those two factors when it came to the meal pouches were two of the things that really impressed me alongside all the other stuff that the farmer's dog does do well. Their meals are vet formulated, they use human grade ingredients. Like I mentioned already, they give you custom meal plans. Now, when it came to price, that was another area where the farmer's dog really impressed me. I saw a comment on one of my previous videos. I had shared that I was paying $193 for Sky and Copper's food, and they were asking whether that was per dog or for Sky and Copper. So that was for both Sky and Copper. And just to make sure, because like I said, I first filmed my review over a year ago, I wanted to make sure the pricing was still pretty accurate. And I actually expected it to go up a bit. But when I actually filled out this time, the price of my meal plan for Sky and Copper actually came down to $188. Now it's important to point out that's before tax and I didn't point that out in my previous video. I'm guessing that's because Sky and Copper have both lost a little bit of weight. So perhaps that means I need less food each month and that's why the meal plans have reduced in price. So I was actually quoted $188 to feed the farmer's dog to Sky and Copper if I was to sign up today. Of course, you do get that 50% discount on your first month and I've got a link to that in my video and also a link in the description below if you're interested. So compared to all of the other fresh dog food brands that I have have reviewed Ollie, Nom Nom, the Pets Table, and I'm probably forgetting a few more Spot and Tangles in there too. They usually came out around $220 to $240, whereas the Farmer's Dog saved me over $30 a month. So that's a huge saving, and they're by far the best price of all the fresh dog food companies that I have reviewed. I do believe it's the best fresh dog food brand of all the dog food brands out there in the US. And if you are looking to feed fresh, my first recommendation would be the Farmer's Dog. And Sky and Copper did really like their food, especially at the start, they were very food motivated. Copper is more of a food motivated dog anyway. And if you're familiar with Life of Klikai, you'll know that. Sky is my picky eater and she did really enjoy their meals, especially at the start. And I'm gonna to touch upon that when I go to disadvantages because that did slightly change over time. But I will say of all the fresh dog food that I have tried, Sky and Copper definitely liked the Farmer's dog the most. So did I notice some changes in my dogs? Well, like I mentioned earlier, Copper is a little bit chubby and I have noticed that he has lost a little bit of weight. I would say Sky is about the same. I don't really feel like she gained that much weight. I did notice that the tear stains did improve while feeding the farmer's dog. So that was one added benefit. And I would say overall, they had a pretty happy and healthy lifestyle. Another thing that I noticed feeding fresh compared to dry dog food is that they actually seem to shed less. I don't know if that's just a coincidence, but that is also something that I've noticed. So overall, I would say that we had a good experience feeding the Farmer's Dog to Sky and Copper. They liked it and I felt like they were happy and healthy. Now, I also saw some comments from people who were saying, why don't you just make fresh dog food at home? And I just don't have time to do that. I have a toddler, I work from home. I just don't have the time in my day. It already feels like I don't get enough done as it is. So I do like the convenience of fresh. And what I like about fresh is that it feels fresher and healthier than kibble. And it's also not as stressful to deal with as raw dog food. Although I will also touch upon that as I get into the disadvantages. So I do think fresh is a pretty convenient way to feed your dog custom dog food. So they were 
were the advantages. Now let's move on to the disadvantages and I'm gonna be as candid as possible here. Sky did ultimately grow bored with some of the farmer's dog recipes, especially the turkey and the pork recipe, which is a pity. I think the turkey recipe from a human's point of view actually looks the most interesting because it's got the most color. I did find that Sky wouldn't always finish the turkey recipe and I had the same issue with the pork. And she did become kind of fussy with the farmer's dog. Copper on the other hand, he is very food motivated and enjoys his food for the most part and I had no issues with him. But ultimately that did lead me away from feeding the farmer's dog and I switched to a raw dog food company called We Feed Raw who I feed in conjunction with Sunday's Food for Dogs. That's an air dried dog food company. So I have different textures in their dog food bowl and I like being able to feed Sundays during the day if we're doing any scent work or if I'm doing training with the dogs or if we're out for a walk. So another issue that I have with the farmer's dog and to be honest, I have the same issue now with raw dog food too because it requires freezer space. So you do need quite a substantial freezer to store all their meals. I'd use a spare freezer in the garage to make sure that I could store all of Sky and Copper's meals. And I will admit when it comes to convenience, that isn't convenient. And that's one way where dry dog food is a much more convenient way to feed your dog because you don't need to worry about fridge and freezer space. Now, in one of the comments in one of my videos, someone actually shared that the farmer's dog did actually send them a container. I have never received a container from the farmer's dog anytime that I've ordered from them. And I wish I did because like I mentioned earlier, their meal packets are portioned out on a daily guide. And that means that you have half open meal packets in your fridge and it would be great to have had and it would have been a nice touch to have been sent to containers so that I could have stored these half open meal packets. And of course I have two because I'm feeding Sky and Copper different meal pouches. I would have loved to have had a milk container. I think that would have been just a nice touch. Another thing that I would love to see from the farmer's dog is more recipes. This is something that I really like about We Feed Raw, who is a raw dog food company that I'm currently feeding. They have a lot of different recipes, including venison, which is one that Sky and Copper really like. And I would love to see if the farmer's dog do introduce more as they, and I would love to see if the farmer's dog do end up introducing more. If you're familiar with Life of Klikai and our community, and on all the videos that we've done, you'll know that we used to feed a fresh dog food company in the UK who kind of remind me of the farmer's dog and they had over 10 recipes. So maybe that's in the farmer's dog's future, I don't know, but I would love to have some more recipes so I could vary the meals a little bit more and keep Sky interested and I guess perk up her curiosity when it comes to meal time. And obviously, while I do like the price of the farmer's dog, it is a disadvantage when you consider that dry dog food can be a lot cheaper than fresh dog food. So that's something that I will acknowledge. And as a family of three and then two dogs and with the rising cost of living, it's not always easy being able to justify the cost of a dog food subscription. Ultimately, I want Sky and Copper to be happy. And like I said, Copper is much more food motivated, but Sky has been very fussy and picky in the past. And we've had spells where she won't eat her food. She's just thrown up bile in the morning. We've had trips to the emergency vet and it's been very stressful and we don't want to go back to those days. So that's why we do pay for a dog food subscription, but it is expensive and pricey. And I can acknowledge that for some people, it's just not worth the extra cost when they feel like their dog is happy on some other brands that are much cheaper. Now, before I sign off, just in the spirit of transparency, you may be wondering, what am I feeding Sky and Copper at the moment? And we are not currently feeding the farmer's dog to Sky and Copper. That doesn't mean I wouldn't go back to them in the future. But like I mentioned, Sky did get a little bit bored with some of the recipes. I ended up feeding a raw dog food brand called We Feed Raw in conjunction with an air dried dog food brand called Sunday's Food for Dogs. And that is working really well with Sky and Copper at the moment. Having said that, I would consider going back to the farmer's dog in the future. Just for now, I'm having great success with those two brands and I've never seen Sky and Copper so excited, especially Sky. And while she's enjoying it, I want to continue with those two brands. But like I said earlier in the video, if you are someone that is strictly wanting to consider a fresh dog food company and a fresh dog food subscription, my recommendation would be the Farmer's Dog. And I had the best experience with them when compared to any of the other fresh dog food companies that are out there. And when I say best experience, what I really mean is Sky and Copper have liked their food more than any of the other brands. Now, if you are watching this and you do want to give the Farmer's Dog a go, then you can save 50% on your first order. That's a discount that we have exclusively for our viewers on this Life of Klikai channel. All you need to do is click the link in this video or you can find the link in the description below. And I'll also share some links to some of my articles on my website if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the farmer's dog. Before I sign off, if you have tried the farmer's dog or you're currently feeding the farmer's dog, why not leave a comment below and let us know your experience that you can help other people that are watching this video too if they're deciding between the farmer's dog or whether they're currently feeding the farmer's dog and not sure whether to stick with it or not. But that's all for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.